In this section, we are going to talk about net route mode versus transparent mode. Specifically, we are going to understand what are the differences between the two and why, we, why should we even uh, care about where is it necessary to implement this kind of configuration and of course how we do it. So the 40 gauge firewall installed between the internal network and existing router of firewall. This would be the transparent mode. If we refer to our previous diagrams, let's take a look at this one. So in this case we said that the 40 gate stays between the internal network on the left and the internet or internet boundary on the right. Well, let's say that at this point this is no longer a 40 gate. This is no longer a 40 gate firewall. Let's say, I don't know, if it's uh, Cisco or, or Juniper. Checkpoint or I don't know, Palo Alto. Palo Alto Networks. Let's suppose that we are not sure or we are unsure about whether the connection, the connectivity is secure and we want to add an extra layer of security. Well, this is the place where we'll install the 40 gate firewall. So it will be in transparent mode, meaning it will not modify any IP addressing details in our network but we will just put it like in the middle and connect it to our existing router or firewall and connecting it to our LAN segment. Let's switch now to our slides. So as I said, no changes to IP addressing schema apply security scanning this is basically the reason that transparent mode or net transparent mode exists and no network changes required it's just needed to provide a management ip address so that it's accessible to you when you configure it when you manage it and when you analyze the security events the security and when you analyze the security events that may or may not have to have taken place So step by step, first is to change 40 gate operating mode. We have a couple of commands, config system settings, set operational mode transport, set manage IP, so the management IP, set a gateway, so where does the traffic uh, lead to, it will come from the internal network, but it has to, you have to specify where it's going. Next, optional, you have to configure DNS servers. Third step, configure policy to allow traffic from internal LAN to the internet. Remember that this is uh, what we have done when we configure the, the source net. We have said that all the packets coming from the inside will be netted to the IP address of the outside interface. This is similar to what we have done already. And some obvious steps, shut down and interconnect 40 gate firewall in the network. And very important, analyze results in the dashboard. As we have seen in the 40 view all sessions and select the now option. We are in the graphical user interface for another 40 gate now. I have deployed a new one, it's dot .156, so let's log in. As it's brand new, you have only username and no password. Up to this point, we have discussed only about the GUI, the graphical user interface. Whether you like it or not, there will be moments where you will have to switch to CLI, command line interface. It's more advanced, it's less uh, error prone. And if you want to use a software for this, like, I don't know, Secure CRT or Putty or others, it's fine. Or if you want to use the, the, the CLI directly from the GUI, this is the place. So it's in the top right corner, just click on it and the CLI console it's up and running. So first thing first, step one has said change 40 gate operating mode. You can see now on, on the left it says that it's running in the net, the flow based. So it's running in route net mode. We'll just change that. So config, config, system, settings. Now set operation mode, question mark, we have two, 
net and transparent. So we'll just go for transparent. After what? After that, we have to set the management IP address. So set manage IP. I will just put the same IP address that I have now. So IP and subnet mask. Also the gateway. So where are the packets going to? And hit end. That was an error. So again, set gateway. 172.27.2.1 and hit end. We have lost connectivity. Now the FortiGate is reconfiguring itself and we will wait until it's finished and get back. All right, so we're back now. FortiGate has booted and look at this, now it's on mode transparent. As opposed to our first FortiGate, we have configured in route mode. It's NAT, flow based, and this one, we can see it's transparent. So the migration has been done successful. As said, the second step would be to configure DNS servers. So go to network, DNS, and whether accept the FortiGuard servers by default or you want to specify your own, it's your own decision. Next, it's to configure, next step is to configure the policy to allow traffic from internal LAN to the internet. And we have done this in the previous sections, it's on policy and objects, IPv4 policy. By default, yes, we have found here the implicit deny policy. If you want to create one new, hit the create new. Configure the new policy, let's say new policy, incoming interface, port 2, port 1 is the one that we, we have here, as, as the one I mean, towards the, the existing firewall in the, in the architecture, and it's more general, just that you see it, uh, how it's done on the, on the fast side, service, all, accept, whether to activate or not the security profiles, antivirus, web filtering, DNS, application control and IPS. As a best practice, it's, it will not hurt you to, to uh, activate the logging, logging a lot of traffic, why not all sessions to see what's happening there, generate logs when session starts. I would say this is also rec a good recommendation. Capture packets maybe you would want to activate or to enable when things are not going right. So hit OK and we have finished also the fourth, uh, the fourth step. Now it is the time for, uh, for shutdown. You would shut down your, your FortiGate and insert it into the network. And in the end, after everything it's booted up, has powered, you'd go to uh, FortiView and all sessions. Hit now. And this is the place where all the sessions would, would populate the, the table and you could analyze and see how things are working, whether traffic is passing by or not, and if it's conforming to your configured policy.